in search of soil. Is there an upper limit of where you think organic matter, you start to lose value in it? Like there's something wrong with the soil if organic matter keeps going up, it's not breaking it down. I've heard this statement, the whole point of organic yeah. matter is to lose it. What do you think about that? Uh, I haven't seen an upper limit yet, and it's going to take you a long time to get there. So I really wouldn't worry about it. But let's just take an example. Our muck soils, you know, they are they can be 30 to 50 percent organic matter. They produce really good crops, but they have to be drained. In the process of draining them, what happens? We oxidize them and they burn up. It's just like putting wood in a stove. When you open that damper up and you put the oxygen in there, you're going to burn that carbon up. Well, in that carbon is a lot of nutrients and they can be extremely productive. So instead of thinking about uh, trying to reach what I would call uh, high, really high levels of organic matter, I would think about organic matter turnover. That's what's more important. So let me give you a, a real quick example. Let's think about a, a really good sandy, loamy soil that has 1% to 2% organic matter, okay? And then let's compare that to, let's say, a, a heavy clay loam soil that has, let's say, 5%, um, 6% organic matter. Can I produce 200, 300 bushel corn on both of those? The answer is yes, but what's the difference? The difference on the one to 2% organic matter is we have very fast carbon turnover and it, the corn's gonna grow quickly, but we're gonna get fast carbon turnover. We need to keep replacing that carbon. You know, we don't wanna get it down too low. If you get it down like a half a percent, that's that's gonna become like blow sand. You know, it's just not gonna do very well. But if you have a, a pretty good sandy soil that has, you know, two, 3% organic matter, that can produce just as well as, as a four, five, 6% uh, clay soil. Now the clay soil, the organic matters, very high, but it's turning over much slower, okay? So it's not so much, it's really about uh, a combination of organic accumulation, but it's also about uh, organic turnover that's really important. Both systems, we can get good crops, okay? You just have to know that in a sandy soil, it may, you're never gonna get, it's gonna be very hard to get, five, six, eight percent organic matter on a sandy soil just because it's of the porosity that is there. There's a lot of oxygen there, but that doesn't mean you can't raise good crops. Uh, you know what? A good organic matter level on a sandy soil is going to be a lot different than a good organic matter on a clay soil. So got to understand those differences. And it's really about organic matter turnover that that uh, we're looking at and when those nutrients are available. Both systems can be can uh, do quite well for us. Does that kind of make sense? It makes a lot of sense. And, and hopefully, one, I keep asking you that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm following yeah. along with you. So you're doing a great job of explaining it. And if you think about building organic matter, one way to do that is to keep that living root in the soil. You've talked a lot about multi species Absolutely. cover crop. If somebody, to try and keep it as universal as possible, I know you're in Ohio. But to try and keep it geographically mm -hmm. as universal as possible, how should somebody think about putting together a multi-species cover crop blend for their land if they're looking to, if they're in a no-till system, they're looking to improve the quality of the soil, sure. build topsoil, build organic matter? So, so what we're, we need to think about when in a multi-species mix is we want that diversity. So there's, there's a couple different types of cover crops that we want to think about as a group. So you have your warm season cover crops. It kind of depends on the time of the year. Warm season cover crops are crops that are going to be grown in the summer. They're going to die with the first frost. So if you uh, are planting them in the fall, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to plant a warm season. But if you've got, say, after wheat or, uh, you know, uh, you can put uh, have a long growing season and you, you can put in a, a warm season cover crop, try to do a mixture of warm season with 
cool season, cool seasons are the ones that will survive the winter and will survive a frost. And so you try to do a mixture. So that's one way of looking at it. We also like to see diversity in legumes or clovers that are going to add nitrogen. They typically tend to have more tap roots uh, versus grasses, which have finer roots and are going to add more carbon. So your legumes will add a little more nitrogen. Your grasses are going to add more carbon. And we want to have a balance of those. And then we want to throw in maybe a couple brassicas. Uh, and these can be warm and cool season, just depending on your growing season. And then there might be some what we call other ones, you know, things like buckwheat and sunflower. They can make really great pollinators to help us with soil health. And so you try to get a diversity uh, of different plants. You know, some people have experimented up, up to, you know, 15 or 20 different species. I would maybe when you're starting, it can be a little more, more difficult. You might start off with, you know, say three to five. And then if you're comfortable with that, try to go to seven to eight to 10. And then, you know, you can go wherever you want. But just remember, seed cost does become an issue as you add more and more species. Some of these cost a lot more. Uh, try to put in some of the species that are both small seeded because they tend to be quite a bit cheaper. And um, uh, if you put those in, you only need maybe a quarter to half a pound, and they might only be just a couple bucks versus putting something that's really expensive. You know, if you're getting up five, seven, ten dollars a pound, why it can get pretty expensive. I've seen cover crop mixes cost as little as you know ten to twelve dollars to as much as a hundred dollars an acre. And it's a lot harder to make that hundred dollars an acre pay for itself. So, so there, there's a happy mix. Usually, twenty to twenty-five dollars an acre is what I try to stick with. Most people will go that if I can go a little bit cheaper in tough times, maybe go just a little cheaper and put in something that doesn't cost quite as much. And uh, uh, anything that has a live root is going to help you uh, generally. Um, now, you don't want to have weeds. The only reason I say that is uh, if they go to seed, why then then you're going to be fighting your weeds. So try to find something that's a little easier to kill and maybe a little cheaper and can give you most of the benefits, give you the most benefits possible. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out some of the great clips and watch the full interviews right here on In Search of Soil.